Hey, welcome to another episode of the DTC Insider Podcast. I'm Brian Royce and will your host. And man, I can't believe we are already in November. I, I honestly kind of believe it time flies. I know I say the same every single year, but this is no exception. <laughs> But that's why today I have something very special for you. In this episode, we are not going to interview anybody. I'm going to talk what matters the most nowadays, which is Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So it's actually the first one I'll do without any guest after a long time, but I won't be alone. I have my business partner here with me, uh, my business partner at BSR Digital, my agency, by the way. Her name is Floor, and she'll be joining me in some episodes as a co-host. Hey, Floor, I'm really happy to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a, a great time the same way we do off the record. And by the way, for those who don't know who you are, could you please quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, part, part of the BSR Digital Agency. I'm the account manager for most of our clients, and I've been in the digital marketing uh, area for like almost seven years now. That's a lot. So even <laughs> before iOS 14, even before like we've yeah. been in the in the good old days of advertising, yeah. and, and, and it was easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I want to deliver on the promise that I mentioned at the beginning of the show, and I know we will we'll discuss many actionable actionable uh, tips uh, for the audience, whether you are a brand, an agency, a marketer, I hope this is useful for you because, you know, this is on, we are already in November. And if you haven't started uh, your Black Friday and Cyber Monday efforts, you better start early because every single brand or almost every single brand we know is going to start uh, early. Some of them have already started. So we have some news for you. In case you haven't heard, Meta has released the perfect gift for advertisers for this time of the year, which is the budget scheduling feature. What's that about, Floor? Uh, it's amazing. It's going to make our lives so much easier. Uh, you can basically uh, tell Meta specific dates when you're, you want your budget to be higher, either by an amount or a percentage, and then it just does uh, its thing automatically, increases the budget the day you tell it to, and goes back to normal when that period ends without so any wait, need for wait. rules. We don't need any more rules for that. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how confusing are they? I mean, we have had so many issues with rules, even though we pay attention like twice, how to set them up, etc. We always have had issues with them, right? They're super complicated. You can always forget about one setting or the other when the role needs to run. And this way you just set the dates and the budget and that's it. Yeah, Super easy. I mean, yeah, and with rules, you cannot detach like an ad set or an ad or a campaign. Like you you gotta let it you gotta let it off the hook. You, you you need to like turn off the rule and create another one if you want to keep it to keep going with it uh, for a different uh, ad set or anything else. So this is uh, a relief. So how does it work? Uh, it's uh, very simple. You go to either the campaign or the ad set level and you can, where you set the budget, there's a new option where it says budget scheduling. You turn it on, you choose the dates where you want, to, want it to increase or decrease if you want it to. And you set either the amount or the percentage that you want to increase by, and that's it. So let's say you want to say, "Hey, uh, let's let's uh, the, I don't know, let's increase the ad spend by twenty percent this weekend." We can go ahead on any type of campaign, right? Even like the manual campaigns yeah. or British Plus campaigns. We can go and say, "Hey, start the scale." Um, Friday night and ended at the end of this of the Sunday. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, and you don't need to calculate after the ten two percent increase how much is the decrease in percentage to go back to normal. Facebook does that automatically. That's awesome. And then it, I, I guess if I'm not mistaken, they can add a more time periods, right? Not yes. only one. 
yeah, you can do it every weekend if you want, and you don't need to like set rules or do it manually. You just set the the time frames, and that's it. That's awesome. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's up to fifty time periods that you can set up, right? Mm -hmm. So the scale it's always calculated um, using the original amount. If I'm not mistaken, so if you say uh, increase the ad spend by twenty percent until now this sunday on monday you create another one that i don't know it should increase another 30 <laughs> percent. i guess it will take the original amount is that correct uh that's something that we need to check it's a good uh, question right <laughs> yeah, that's a good question <laughs> that's very interesting we don't want to to make mistakes on on that side um but i guess if it's in the same time frame like if it doesn't go back to normal, then maybe it just keeps adding. And then if it's completely separate, you do it for one weekend and then for the other, it would use the same base. Yeah. So in, in yes. So what Facebook or what Meta said is that it will go back to the original uh, amount, but it's a good question to ask ourselves whether it will keep the scaled, let's say, amount or not if we overlap dates, if we mm -hmm. can overlap dates, because let's say we can, we, we want to say, let's start scaling, but I don't want to go back to the original amount. Like I want to start scaling <clears throat> or I want to scale uh, at a certain pace, right? I don't know, every three days, I want to scale another 20% if things are going well. I think we don't have any conditions. I think for that, we will need, unfortunately, rules. Rule. Right? Yes. I think in that scenario, you would still need to use the rules because you want to keep increasing as the performance goes. This is only for a time frame, a specific increase, and then go back to what it was in the beginning. Yes. So a great feature indeed. And the timing mm -hmm. couldn't be better, right? <clears throat> so we are going to test it. At least in some accounts to see how it works. I don't know if it's rolled out entirely, is it? Not yet. Not yet. Not every account uh, has the, the new function, but we're, as soon as we have it on our accounts, we will be testing it, especially if we have it for Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend. We will be right there, but testing it should be easier to, to manage. Yes. Awesome. So changing subjects. Shopify has recently released a report uh, with some things brands should know about this year's holiday shoppers. I don't know if we can or we agree with all of them, but we're going to tell you the things that we consider interesting, at least for you to keep in mind. So I will start if you want, Flora. Um, according to Shopify, 41% of holiday shoppers plan to start buying in October. So, hey, we are already in November. You can go ahead and check if many people bought already in, in case, of course, you have re you released something during that month, then 39% in November and 20% in December. Keep this stat in your head because we are going to come back to this one in a sec. So 41% in October, 39% in November, and 20% in December. And with regards to how much they are willing to spend, According to them, nearly three in four holiday shoppers, 74%, plan to spend about the same or more on holiday gifts this year compared to last year. So that's great news. In a really tough context for the US and worldwide too, it's great news that people are willing to spend the same or more. But that being said, <clears throat> I read in a different report around the same dates by Shopify, that people are willing to spend less, not, not less in amount, but they are willing to buy cheaper items, right? So maybe they are spending the same, but I don't know if it's something psychological or not, but they will spend it in smaller amounts, right? But I don't know, yeah. what do you think, for? I think, yeah, people are, are very mindful of their spending habits nowadays especially with this situation. And they want to make sure that they are getting a bargain or they're getting good value for their money. So 
probably they're not going to be making any rush decisions in this year. Yes, and one fun fact is that Gen Z is feeling the most generous, uh, and they are planning to spend thirty-seven percent. Sorry, thirty-seven percent. They're planning to spend more than last year. So that's awesome, right? I guess they have more more disposable income. Yeah, but yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, the younger generation is willing to spend more, but that's great. I don't know. Maybe. They, they live with their parents or they're in college or they have income they didn't use for paying rent or something like that. I don't know, right? But there must be a reason or they, I don't know, my, my parents and my grandparents uh, like to, um, let's say, save money more than spending money. I guess, I guess it's a, a generation uh, mindset. And then uh, in this case, our generation, I think we, we like, enjoying life more we travel more often than our parents or grandparents did back then right so i guess yeah. Gen Z, the same happens right they they want to spend more absolutely absolutely you yeah we know that we can get some nice things and enjoy them and not wait until retirement for that yeah yes it's <laughs> always good to enjoy but yeah good news on this front uh we, we were all expecting and we are still expecting because this is a report, right? But we hope that people, uh, and I'm sure they will spend the same or more than last year. Uh, so now we, we, we said that, and, and I said it at the beginning of the episode that this is going to be uh, an, episode, an episode full of value, packed with value uh, regarding Black Friday. And we are going to keep doing that. Now talking about three mistakes that we saw firsthand brands made and we want you to avoid, right? Because they learned the lesson and we want you to learn it too before it's too late, right? So the first one is a brand we work with. Actually, they are a fast fashion brand and they spend, they spend a fair amount of money on Meta, on TikTok, on Google and many other platforms, right? And last year, something special happened right floor yes yes uh it was a uh, it was a mistake of course um but uh, this brand has very uh, ambitious goals they always want to grow every month every year they want to see uh, growth in in sales in revenue um so we had a plan in place we we know how the trend goes how october is um, a little bit weaker than November is the strongest month of the year and December is a good time for for fashion brands but I mean December is never as good as November uh, so what happened is that this client was very ambitious they wanted to grow and they didn't want to see December fall against November so they decided to spend even more they increased their budget for December. And that didn't pay off very well. <laughs> and December was a good month, but it was, didn't beat November as normally happens. But they spent a lot more that month. So of course their their ROAS, their return, it plummeted. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like the casino, right? You don't know where when to quit. And sometimes that that can hurt a lot the performance in this case what happened is what Ford said we always put together 90 day roadmaps which is it's basically a plan with the high level goals for each of those three months and the key actions we need to, uh, to, to 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 take to actually achieve those goals and we knew based on past year's data that November was going to be the strongest month for them and we they had some outside advice from Meta in this case uh, that they, they say, hey, well, you should double down. You did great on November. You will do even better on December or as good as November. We advise against it, against it and hey, we could be wrong, right? But we weren't and uh, it took them almost one the next quarter Q1 of this year to make it up for the losses they have. So a big lesson is that I said, sometimes it feels like the casino, but it's not because the casino is something random as we all know, we're almost, we can discuss that later. But in this case, they have data 
it's not the first year they do this because I know if you're listening or watching this episode and it's the first time you're doing any Black Friday or Cyber Monday or any holiday shopping season, I know you're in the dark. You don't know what to expect. You can read the industry benchmarks, reports, and I hope this is a valuable lesson for you to take. But if you already have data, maybe you do great in December and even better than November. I don't know, right? So you should plan accordingly the budgets, the strategy, the campaigns, etc. Everything you do should be based on past year's data if you have that, right? Where to look for that data? Where can they look for, for example, for that data? Uh, well, the the store, the backend is the most reliable source of information. So Shopify in this case, uh, we always look at trends, how each quarter compares to the other, how each month compares to the other. And we knew that December was maybe the second strongest month, but not the first, not better than November. We knew that uh, every year it had been the same. So the expectations were high, but yeah, we went against the, the data. Yes, exactly. So the second mistake was made by actually a guest of this podcast, and he mentioned that himself here on the show. I'm talking about Anson Belt and Buckle. Uh, so David mentioned that the lack of inventory forecasting cost them a lot of money last year as well. So basically they sell only belts and buckles, right? But they sell that. That's what they do, right? And they, for some reason, they they didn't have a proper forecast for the inventory they needed to buy they just you know bought inventory like that and they mm -hmm. are an eight-figure brand they, they didn't start yesterday they've been in business for i don't know over 10 or 15 years i believe or more and they 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 actually miscalculated how much inventory they needed for the holiday season and they ran out of stock very soon in the holiday season so they missed uh, mm -hmm. on a lot of sales right so that's the other yeah. phase of the equation right we mentioned how overspending can hurt you so lack of inventory can hurt you more or even the same right yeah and that shows how the what how important processes are in every part of the business not yes. having the right process for for inventory tracking and and ordering it's it's a yes. very yeah. huge yeah, marketing is, marketing is a big a big area of any DTC brand, but it's not the only important one. So there are many processes on the back end that you should watch too, right? And one of them is the forecasting the inventory, right? One of the many. So um, the third mistake is one we heard from a client actually. And they said they wanted to use Black Friday only, only to clear old inventory. Yeah. That's it, right? And hey, I said only because I don't think it's bad to use that time of the year for clearing out old inventory. That's awesome. That's great. It's part of what every brand do. But using it only for that, I think it's a mistake. Do you agree, Floor? I agree 100 percent I think people people know they they prepare for for Black Friday season for the sales and they know when something is has been around for a long time and it's discounted and when something is new and it doesn't have a discount and normally consumers don't like that they want the good deals not the old stuff only yes and let's take a look at this in a different from a different perspective you can get out of this i mean either uh, one of these two let's say in black friday you can get either purchases from existing customers or new customers right let's say for a sec that you want to sell these to an existing customer they already know about you they already know what you sell and probably they know this is an old item so although some people might be into it most of them 
are not because they already know and they've been exposed to it many times and now they it's not something they were sorry they already, oh. and they already had a chance to buy it yeah and they didn't and even if it wasn't discounted before and nowadays, if it, if it is an old item, they're going to tell and probably they're going to be disappointed because they were expecting something else. And if you want to get on the flip side, new customers, that's like the cover letter. That's the first impression uh, that they are going to see about your business, right? Do you really want that to be the first impression for them, right? So why not put in the best of the best there you don't need to give it away like you don't need to give a 90 percent discount right but why don't showcase the best you can you can show them so they can buy it and come back for more because showing them some old stuff they don't know if it's an old stuff or not your current customers will but they wouldn't they will see that you're selling something that probably is out of fashion or whatever right and you're not going to be into that and probably you're going to miss out on many new customers that way. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's very important to add value and to give value to the customer in, in this type of time of the year. Um, it wouldn't make sense to only have uh, discounts on uh, summer items when you're right in, in the middle of autumn, almost winter. People are not looking for that for in Black Friday. They want yes. good value for something that they can use now. Yeah, sometimes you can you can tell whether it's something new or not because I don't know mm -hmm. color changes uh, depending on yeah. the season or something as you said it's a winter thing for yeah. summer the other way around. So people mm -hmm. people are not stupid. They can tell wh whether something's new or not. So and whether something you are giving them a great deal or not. So be the smart person in the room and give them a good deal. And I'm sure they will come back uh, for more if they like it. So talking about processes, you mentioned that brands should have many processes. You know, the, the front end is one thing, but on the back end, there are many. And one of the processes we have in the agency, and I told you this when I said, hey, keep these stats in mind, uh, you know, the, the ones about the, when people buy for Black Friday, according to the Shopify survey, 41% in October, 39% in November, and then 20 it goes down to 20 in December. Well, for that, we use what we call 90-day uh, roadmaps. As I said before, these are plans we do ahead of the quarter, before the quarter starts. We uh, do it in a presentation, and basically we say, hey, we discuss the goals for the client. Sometimes it takes some conversations, right? Because many times they are clear on their goals, but many times they aren't, right? It depends on the brand. And we need to discuss the goals for the next 90 days. And then we need to do what? for? We need to break them down into monthly goals, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, it's super important for us as an agency to have a roadmap, to have uh, clarity on our clients' goals. So that's why we do this. And we know that we're going to be focusing on actions and goals that actually move the needle to achieve uh, what our client is expecting. So if they want to, let's say, grow in Q4, we know that October, November, and December are not going to be the same for growth. So we can plan ahead and be prepared for that and have the according actions for each of these months. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, say that way. If you're, this is the North Star, right? And guess what? This is not perfect. Many times there are I don't know, deviations, and we want to start doing something, and then time goes by, and we start doing something else, and it happens to many or all companies. It's written in many books, right? And that's why having this North Star says um says something like hey you know we know we need to reach this destination it doesn't matter how we do it so the wind took us this route in instead of the original one who cares we are going to take this route but we know that we need to reach this north star right so this is the way we use these roadmaps we don't take them as hey 
this is exactly how things are going to play out. No, we say, hey, this is these are the actions we need to take to actually reach the goals. And then if those actions or even the goals change uh, over time, we can be still on track because we know we where we are heading. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course, we can always adjust in the middle if we see that something is not working or something that we planned for did not go, uh, did not have the results that we wanted, uh, we can adjust and test something different, but we know what is the goal of the month, where we need to, to be at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter. That's super yes. important. And to do a quick recap, this what this contains exactly is basically the high level goals for each of the three months. Sometimes we, we can say, hey, what's the goal? Like the number one or the two goals you have for this quarter. And then we can break them down into monthly goals because I don't know, let's say you want, I'm making it up, a thousand new customers for the end of the quarter. Okay, a thousand new customers, unless we are in Black Friday or in Q4, or let's say we are in Q4. We know that this is not going to be even uh, throughout the month, every month, right? So we're going to get less customers, less new customers in October than in November, and, and then less in December than in November. So we can say, hey, we can forecast that, I don't know, 30% uh, are going to be in October, then... So, I don't know, 15 in November and then in December, the rest, right? So we can plan that accordingly and say, okay, so if you're going to get X amount in October, how much we need to scale the budget? What do we need to put in place in X channels to make it happen? And at least three to five, ideally high level actions, not the exact campaigns you're going to implement, but high level actions, like we need to increment the budget by X percent, we need to create campaigns on Meta to support this. We need to create campaigns on Google to support whatever, right? We need to forecast the inventory, right? We, we, we need to keep like the three to five actions and the same with the rest of the month. And by after each month ends, ideally you meet as a team with the client or if you are the client, you meet with your team, right? And say, hey, are we on track or not? We, and this is a step um, like one one step further what we do is we keep track on this weekly right we are crazy but we do it right because we <laughs> we want to be we want to be ahead of the of the of the of the um, trends and if we need to have a conversation with a client by the end of a month and tell them the good or the bad news we need to be on track on a weekly basis so it's not a surprise by the end of the month and it makes sense right Absolutely. Yes, we we track everything. We make sure that we are on the on the right path. And nobody wants to get the, the bad news at the end of the month without previous notice. You know, exactly. you because you if you see by you know the middle of the month that you're not going to make it, you can make us make a change in your strategy. You can try something different or you can just at least give the client a note like, hey, this is where we are and this is what's going to happen and this is what we are doing to compensate for it okay great so the last thing is that we talked about the plans we talked about how this involved uh, the budgets right uh, how whether to scale them or not depending on the goals you have and the funnels are part of the strategy and by funnels i mean the path to conversions, right? Typically, if you have a, an e-commerce store, a Shopify store, let's say, or any other type of store, you get traffic, homepage, collection, product page, uh, add to cart, checkout, and they buy, right? Typically, that's the classic path to conversion, right? With many caveats, but let's say that's the that's the one. Of course, you can have shortcuts. You can send them directly to a, to a product page. You can send some people to a new to the new collection page, etc. And you can also have landing pages, right? For Black Friday, in this case, this time of the year is no exception. Having landing pages could be really beneficial in most cases. In some cases, I mean, I I I I think that they never hurt, but I think in many cases are more needed than others. 
and I will mention examples and then I will love your opinion for it. Yeah. So of course, if you have some cool and different strategy for Black Friday, different from the from everything you have done during the year. So I, I think you need, you need the landing page. So I don't know, you have some cool deals, bundles, and yeah, you even have some countdowns. And so of course it will make sense to have a, like a, a landing page with a great theme uh, around Black Friday or any name you, you put to that time of the year with all the deals with, a, with, the, with an intended order, right? So maybe you have like your top deals, so you put it bigger, than the other ones and you can highlight different things and you can even add a buy button so they don't need to go to your website so that could be one example right but on the flip side if you have all the website with discounts and the website is clear and it's only uh i don't know uh, five ten percent discount and Everything is clear, the home is clear, the sections are clear, the product pages are awesome. You can still have a landing page, right? Because maybe you can you want to prioritize some deals or you want to make some bundles, but you can live without one if you want. Because if you don't have some something anything special, you can live without one. But in most cases, you do want to have a like a branded landing page, right? Yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think brands with thousands of products and a very like, stable discount across all of them might not benefit a lot from it, but even then, they want to push some products more than others because they have a better margin or because they are the new ones or for whatever reason, they want to highlight some products. And sometimes putting them on the, la on the homepage is not enough. So if you create a landing page, it gives you another resource to really put it out there, to reach people, to make it visible for everyone. Exactly. Yes. There are many use case scenarios for landing pages. Of course, it's not the goal of this episode, but we can cover that in a, in a future episode, of course. So, hey, what did you think for? Do you have fun today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was very fun. And... It was uh, super easy to to do this. Yeah, I, I told you. I told you. <laughs> she was very nervous. I mean, I'm always nervous before hitting record, but of course, the first time you do this, uh, you're more nervous. So you did the awesome floor. So um, I, I hope you guys listening or watching this enjoyed everything that we discussed. And of course, you might think differently in some or everything we said if that's the case we would love to hear your comments you can of course um leave us a comment on linkedin you can leave us a comment uh through the contact form on the website you can send us even your comments at hello at the dtc insider.com you can there are many ways you can share your thoughts with us because the, there is no one right way of doing this we are only telling you our experience with these uh, topics and what we think it's best for our clients at least and, and and what we know about this. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are not already there because you are an Apple podcast or anywhere else, you can go and check the show notes at the D2C insider.com. That's the D2C insider.com. You will see the audio version, the video version, and uh, everything we mentioned. Okay. So, Thor, it was amazing to have you here. This is going to be the first of many episodes we plan on recording about these type of tips for Black Friday and more. So, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you. I did. I did. Thank you. Bye.